it was devastating to see that like we didn't even get close to the goal like we had this great idea we both were like this is this is gold this is gonna go so well like everybody we were talking about was like this is such a good idea um so for it to basically flop was like a gut punch and an ego hit for sure um but i think it forced us to do it kind of the old-fashioned way put your money up put your money where your mouth is uh, and 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 see what happens and then we sold out within like a couple of months thank y'all for tapping into another melanated married millionaires in the making show make sure y'all engage with us by leaving a comment or asking a question below and of course queen where can they go to stay tapped in stay connected with us by going to the m4show.com and follow us on instagram at the m4show now let's get into the episode Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of the M4 Show. My name is Devon Chevelle, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. I'm also known as Creed around these parts. You know oh, what are I'm you? talking about? You didn't know? I was, they they, they be calling me Creed. Well, I, they? I, I call me Creed. Okay. And my AI assistant that gives me workouts also calls me Creed. You told that me. I. Yeah, I prompted it to call me that. I'll be honest with you. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> don't get distracted. We also have, of course, my amazing my beautiful the person that keeps me on my toes and checks me sometimes queen herself please introduce yourself don't smile like that <laughs> <laughs> what's going on everybody my name is sinclair aka the health nerd mm -hmm. and yes they call me the health nerd that, that they do that, that they all, all the days do definitely do um but we appreciate y'all for tapping in we got a, a an interesting interesting episode today right so one of the entrepreneurs that I definitely look up to one of the I think prolific rappers that I definitely look up prolific. to uh-huh is Nipsey Hussle right and is that, is that Nip right there come on Nip right there in the background I love to see it on brand um and something that you know is synonymous with his brand is the concept of the marathon mm -hmm. and he says you know the my main distinguishing factor that Different, differentiates me between all the other rappers, entrepreneurs, icons, moguls is I didn't quit. Mm -hmm. I kept going no matter what. So in, in Nipsey Hustle form, I actually ran a half marathon. Because you're crazy. In, in real life. Yeah, I'm crazy in real life. And I think there were some very key lessons from my experience in running the actual half marathon, not full. Don't know if I ever gonna get to a full, to be honest with you, Nip. But some lessons from the half marathon are, in my mind, directly applicable to entrepreneurship. So, Queen, what I would like to do, if you would allow me, is go through some of these lessons, some of these things, random thoughts that were going through my mind as I was struggling. In hours of running. In my 3.2 hours of running, 13.1 miles. Let's go through it. <laughs> Can we do that? I'm very curious. All right. So number one was just the concept of training and conditioning. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and lack thereof, <laughs> you know, like lack thereof, probably mostly on my part. Uh, but it's interesting. Everybody, I think, went there for a very particular goal, particular purpose. Mm. They, they were there to complete a half marathon. There were some people where it was their first half marathon they ever ran. Hello, present. There are other people who've done this annually, biannually. They've been training for years, training for months for this exact moment. And at the start, you can't tell who's been training and who hasn't been training. Mm. Right. At that, that, that starting line, everybody looks no, good. You got the people there that like, yeah, everybody training, me, me included, right? Uh, me, Daniel, uh, Miles, and Nick, Nick. I believe, uh, we were at the back of the line. And, you know, we were moving to the front. Like, we were about to do something. We was like, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Then we got to get to the front. And well, I that was, was the first mistake. I was afraid, for sure. And I was in the front of the front. Like, I was really about to do something. Like, come on. Come on, fellas. Follow me. I'll take us to the promised land. We start the race. Everybody. <laughs> no, no. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Uh, but we start the race. Everyone's at a good, healthy pace. Or at least something that feels healthy at the beginning. About two miles in, I notice... I'm not running with anybody <laughs> that I started with because I didn't train enough, y'all. Right. So, again, this goes to or I'm going to ask Sinclair how it connects with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people want a million dollar business. A lot of people want a hundred million dollar business. A lot of people 
want employees or to finish a half marathon in a certain amount of time, but not everybody is training and conditioning their body and their mind the same, right? So how does that in your head connect to entrepreneurship or into the world of business period? I feel like it directly connects and still with the idea of training your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is such a strong link between like overall wellness, health and wellness and entrepreneurship. For sure. And I feel like we see so many entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, and they have like strict, strict regimens. They eat healthy, they exercise, like they do all these things and they're successful. I feel like it's not impossible, but rare to see somebody who looks like they're, they a mess mm -hmm. and they ain't got their stuff together, but somehow they have a successful Big business. Popular. Right. Yeah. It, you, you don't really see that. So I feel like they go hand in hand. Um, and there's I, a, there's a quote, I don't know who says this, not to cut your wisdom queen. I don't know who says this, but the quote is like how you do one thing is how you do everything. everything yeah. Right. So the fact that one person can be very digital, di digital, what's diligent? the word? Diligent, diligent, diligent. That's why I keep you around, girl. You go with them words. Come on. Now. Call me Miriam. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Um, but for those that are very diligent in the gym and what they eat, they're probably going to have that same work ethic with their emails, mm -hmm. with their follow up with customers, with their follow up on leads and with everything else in life. So, yeah, I like that connection you make. Queen. Yeah. So I feel like if people aren't preparing to, you know, be taking care of their own body and they're just thinking like, I'm just going to stay up every day and grind and not sleep. And like, that's not going to end up well for you. You may get some initial like wave, but that's not a way. That's not a marathon mindset. Mm -mm. That is a sprint mindset. You may get to the, the, the short, that first mile first, but then people are going to start passing you because they're, they're sleeping their eight hours, right? They're, they're getting up, they're doing their morning routine, they're eating right, they're doing all these things. So I think it like directly connects. Yeah, and pass me, they did. Which leads me to number two, which is knowing your comfort zone and staying in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, because as I was watching Daniel run off into the distance, as I was seeing Miles run off into the distance, a thought did occur to me, like, you know what, Devon? Go catch them. Mm -mm. Go catch them. Mm -mm. Stick with them as long as you can. And then another voice was like, you did not train the way they trained. <laughs> I'm going to need you to keep know on. your place. Yeah, know, know your role. <laughs> know your pace and run your race. Another thing is you don't know when a certain race has or a runner has started. Mm. Right. Because waves. yeah, as, as y'all know, in half marathons, there's many different waves. Right. So we were in like the one of the last waves because folks were late and we had to get extra pins and all that good stuff. So we started use a little bathroom. bit later. We had to use the bathroom, got to empty the vessel, all that good stuff. And I'm glad I did. So I would have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so clear running third. There was a there was someone on with a sign that said, don't trust the fart after mile. Oh. eight. Don't trust it. Can you just so, imagine how disgusting that would be? And like, while are running, you going to stop? Or are you just going to keep going with? Stuff in your pants. The fact that that's a question for you is concerning. The, the I fact know that my you, would, answer. you would consider. No, of course not. You know, I would never consider. The fact but that there are you people would out consider there. There are people out there that would run. That would run five additional miles. Yes, I with promise their you. Insides on their outside. I promise you, there are people out if there. If you're that person, I'm gonna need you to stop listening to this podcast <laughs> right now because you I'm are not, not our sure. target. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be around you. <laughs> oh my goodness. But to that point, they were running their race. I was running my race. And I think if I would have tried to speed up and catch up with them, I would have stopped running much sooner. I would have ran out of gas much sooner. Mm -hmm. and I think it's the same thing with, with entrepreneurship. You're seeing all these people in on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on YouTube, and they may seem like they're having success, but you don't know how far back they started. Right. You don't know what pace they've been running in and you're comparing your race, you're comparing your entrepreneurship journey to their reality right now. Yeah. Um, Queen, anything else you want to say on, on that one? I think just social media is an easy way to get in that trap because people just share the highlights, right? Oh, I yeah. got this, this much money in one day. Like I, when entrepreneurs share that type of stuff, I'm like, what? They're like, oh, three mil in one day. I'm just like, that's crazy. Yeah. But again, we don't know what they did to get there. 
Um, and again, that's just a highlight, right? They didn't show you the one day where they got zero sales or yeah. the, when they launched or, their product and nobody signed up. Yeah, whatever. Or they don't show you the ad spend Mm, on the three mil so it's like oh i got three million dollars in one week but they spent 1.5 million or even three million dollars in ads alone so they're really even right but they did generate sales which is another key difference yeah, right? yeah. um that's good thank you thank you sinclair why, why is that good just because like like you said like in itself making three million in one day sounds crazy that sounds like oh my gosh that's wild it almost sounds like unfathomable to make that much money in one right. day but to your point if you spent millions of dollars in advertising, then it's like you of just course. you just paid for more people to see it. Naturally, if more people see it, more people are going to buy it. Right. Like if you paid for 20 million people to, to see it, 100 million people to see it, then then it's like, oh, OK, well, yep. I guess that's average. That's that's cool. Right. And so you want to look at the ratio, the ratio of how much did they spend to get people to, to see it versus how much they actually brought in, which brings up a good point on. If you know the more people that see it, the more chances that sales you can get. And that means you need to find free or creative ways to get in front of more people, right? If you're not the person that has a million dollars in your pocket to spend on Facebook ads, which we don't, hello, yeah. then you need to figure out what are some uh, guerrilla marketing ways that I can get more people, more eyes on my product, on my brand, so I can get more sales, right? Guerrilla marketing. I, just, I did not make that up. I promise you. That's I, I know a, you. That's I know you didn't. Right. I'm just really wondering, like, who came up with that term? What about a gorilla? Says, like, what is that? That doesn't make sense to me. Do you you want me to explain it, or do you? Want oh, if there's actual reasoning, please. There is actual reasoning. Yes. So there's guerrilla warfare, which ties back to the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. when Americans were in Vietnam and the Viet Cong were literally in the jungle. In America, although we had more soldiers, we had more weapons, we didn't know the forest. Hmm. We weren't native to that land. And that's what guerrilla marketing is. It's how do you get your eyes in front of or get your product in front of eyes in their natural habitat? So guerrilla warfare connects to guerrilla marketing. Fascinating. I just thought it tied back to gorillas. I'm like, what? Not if, at all. I've never talked to a gorilla. Have you talked to a gorilla before? No. Welcome to the M4 show where we talk about random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's yeah, that's the historical context for a guerrilla market. It's so smart. Thank you, Sinclair. I appreciate that word of affirmations. <laughs> I try. I read a lot of books, y'all, and watch a lot of videos. Hence the books. Um, but let's let's move on to to number. Let's see where are we at. Number Don't take shortcuts. Three. Don't take shortcuts. Number three. <sighs> so you thought about it. I did. So this is this was probably mile five in my head it was mile eight because the way that my legs were feeling i thought mm. i thought i was almost i was almost there Not like a but gut punch it was it was so bad because literally like after this moment that i'm about to explain a few like maybe minutes later i saw mile six i was like that's it i'm not even halfway <laughs> ah, i'm not gonna tragic. make it bro um but i'm running and you get to this point where it's a it's a maze, right? You're running along this trail. And a lot of times when you're going this way, you can see the other people that are ahead of you on the other side, right? And there might be a, a freeway that's blocking you. There might be some cones that's blocking you. There might be a, a beach that's between you. But in this particular stretch, Sinclair, all there was between people running this way and people running this way were cones. And not even like a bunch of cones to where you Just it's just like a cone every like 10 feet. So I'm running and I'm like, nobody would know. <laughs> Except you. Nobody would know if I do a quick little spin move and skip this half mile, 0.7 miles. I had no idea how long the mm -hmm. loop was. Um, but like you said, I would know. Yeah. Right. So the the key there was in the, in the half marathon and then Sinclair, I want you to talk about maybe some shortcuts in business. But you can't take the shortcuts. You you may get to the finish line faster, but there's a muscle that you build when you run the full 13 miles that you don't build if you just ran the 12 yeah. or the 11 or the 10. And I feel like in entrepreneurship, there's a muscle from going from zero to a million dollars that you just build in practice that you might not build if you go from zero to a million. But I don't, I'm trying to think of a shortcut that would help you get there but you got half a million dollar loan from your parents. 
right? It's like, yes, c- congrats, you got that. But how, what are you missing out because your parents just gave you a half a million dollars mm-hmm. versus your parents investing a half million versus you getting a loan for a half million, you have to pay it back, right? There's some other ways where you can still build that muscle without getting a gift of half a million dollars from the get-go. Um, but Queen, from your vantage point, Shortcuts in business. Talk to us. So I had two that came up while while you were talking. The first one was, and this is not to say that this is not something that works and that something, not something that you should try if that's what you want to do. And we did try it. It didn't work. <laughs> Kickstarter. Uh-huh. Um, right. To some people can be seen as a shortcut, right? Um, yeah. you put your product out there, and although people are paying for it it's like a way to get a lot of money relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I feel like for us, we were seeing that as a, a, a start, right. Uh, how, how does this, that was our product launch. Let me back up for those of you who don't know, haven't heard the Kickstarter story. Mm. Um, we created the game. We got, had our prototypes. We had our first editions ready to launch. And so we decided to do a Kickstarter because a lot of board games go on Kickstarter and do really successful. Um, and Kickstarter is a platform where you can put the idea for your game. You can make a video. You can put the product out there and have even tiers for different ways for people to support. So before, it's like a pre-order. So you don't actually... Like, I'm not paying to get the product right now. I'm paying for the idea so that the, the creator can now go use this money to create the product and send it to me when it's done. Um, but the caveat with Kickstarter is if you don't make the goal that you preset in the beginning, you get zero dollars. And so we set out to make either 25 or 28,000. 28. 28,000. 28, and we got like just over 4,000. So we got zero dollars. And so from there, we had to then put up our own money, get this first round of 250, Mm -hmm. 250 first edition games, and just start from scratch, literally, right from the ground and build it up. And of course, it was devastating to see that like, we didn't even get close to the goal. Like we had this great idea. We both were like, this is this is gold. This is going to go so well. Like everybody we were talking about was like, this is such a good idea. Um, so for it to basically flop was like a gut punch and an ego hit for sure. Um, but I think it forced us to do it kind of the old fashioned way. Put your money up, put yeah. your money where your mouth is and, 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 and see what happens. And then we sold out within like a couple of months. Yeah. So um, I feel like that was almost the universe trying to tell us like, don't take any shortcuts. Mm. Do it the hard way. Do it the long way. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit. There's going to be more some, bump, some more bumps in the road, but you're going to be happier in the long run. Right. So I think that's one way that uh, came to mind. Um, and then the other mind, the other thing that came to mind was buying followers mm, on yep. social media. That's a good one. Yeah, because it's so easy. I get less of the messages Literally now, easy. but yeah, like last year it was like every day I'm getting messages from five bots talking about oh five cents for per follower right and i even like saw people i go on their page and i'm like ten thousand followers yeah and then you look at the likes 16 likes right i'm like hmm, interesting Mm. um but i think that that is a shortcut because you know their followers are not earned they're they're bought right and so yes when a person comes to your page it looks like you have credibility it looks like you've got people following you but Again, when you're posting and a lot of people aren't supporting it or a lot of people aren't liking it or commenting, then that starts to make the customers question like, well, what's going on here? Right. And so I think that that's another way of kind of taking a shortcut that usually doesn't work in the long run because it doesn't teach you. It doesn't teach you anything. No. You, you have to learn what works and what doesn't. You have to put up some posts that flop exactly. to know what works. Um, and I think it you have to really build Right, we have like over five, over five, fifty-five hundred. Girl, you come on now, cause you know we don't buy any followers here, and I found a nice little rhythm of posting. So we're at we're at over six thousand followers Ooh! now on Play Black Wall Street. You know what I'm come talking on. about. You know what I'm talking about. Been going to work. Those are organic followers. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, it, it is good to know that like the six thousand people that have gone to follow us have gone because they've come to our page, they like what we're about, and they click that follow button. Yep. Um. No bots in here. Uh, well, there there probably are some bots, but I mean, they came I, on their own will. You know, when I when I look at the analytics, like we'll have like 400 followers, but and then there'll be like 30 or 40 unfollows within that same month or mm. two months. So what happens is like on a certain post, we get a lot of bot followers, but and then those bot followers, after a while, they start to unfollow. 
right um but yeah i love that point about followers <laughs> bless your soul Thank you. love that point about followers because if you just buy ten thousand followers now you don't know how to get ten thousand followers um i also want to do a slight disclaimer on the the kickstarter because i think i viewed it as a shortcut right so like oh we don't need a community we just go to kickstarter we just put up on kickstarter put up a video and boom we'll get thousands of people to buy our game and i think that was our of course huge mistake going into it mm. you're supposed to go into kickstarter with a built community already mm. right you've already did a lot of pre-work you've sent out your emails you've built built your email list you have your a marketing campaign that you've done you've been tabling for months getting people letting them know hey kickstarter is coming kickstarter is coming kickstarter is coming you have a high quality kickstarter video you got some customer feedback in there and then you launch the kickstarter built on this foundation of work that you've already put in and it's just a platform it's just a platform i saw it as a shortcut because i've seen so many videos where someone's like oh we made Two million on Kickstarter. We made a hundred thousand on Kickstarter. Fifty thousand on Kickstarter. I'm like, we just need twenty eight. What's up? Kickstarter got us. We can do it. Let's just put it up there and let Kickstarter do its thing, <laughs> not knowing <laughs> that you need to do your thing so Kickstarter can do its thing, right? Uh, so this quick disclaimer because I know we got a nice uh, gaming community out there. No disrespect to anybody that got it from the mud in Kickstarter. I know y'all hustle for it. Appreciate y'all. Um, I do want to do a Kickstarter again and actually do it right maybe for another type of idea it's another episode but uh i think there's potential there next game okay maybe yeah maybe maybe maybe, maybe. stay tuned with the with the pre-work put in with the pre-work for sure and we already have we already have the community yeah we have the email list so when we make another black wall street game about a different community i think we're already going to be able to get some pre-orders just organically from instagram but I think we can reach a larger audience and community if we also do it on Kickstarter. Okay. I was going to say, what's the benefit of doing that versus just having pre-orders on our website? It's the shareability and virality of a Kickstarter page, campaign, activities, actions, rewards. Just having a pre-order on our website, I mean, you can get the game and we can probably figure out how to do rewards and different type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But Kickstarter already has it built in. So gotcha. we don't need to build it. Gotcha. All right. Um, that's what I'm thinking. The vi vi virality of it. Yep. All right. Number four. Hopefully y'all y'all are enjoying this so far. If you are, make sure y'all go ahead and give us a like. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on any podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, FM Radio. If this is 100 years in the future and now podcasts are over the FM radio stations. Make sure you give us a like and follow on all those platforms too. Appreciate you. Um, now, Queen, the next one. <laughs> this is a good one. Because mm -hmm. your boy almost lost it. Keep fueling your body, hydrate and eat. And this is before and during, mm -hmm. right? So we woke up the morning of the amazing half marathon and didn't have too much time to eat food before so i had a i had a nice little banana like right well, before now knowing what we what we knew of people coming late you did have time i did have i did have plenty <laughs> of time because everybody was 30 minutes late but me being the person that shows up on time and prepared every time to everything critical action so i was play black wall street um yeah we didn't have time so i ate a banana right before and a banana is like maybe a hundred and eighty calories maybe tops when you when you're running you're burning a uh, hundred two hundred calories per hour right so i'm running i'm running and at some point around mile nine we, we two hours in two and a half hours in at some point everything becomes very bright mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and it's like darkness and then brightness towards the center and my legs become very cinder blocky cinder blocky. they're just heavy they're almost dragging on the floor and you know i'm just i'm running i'm pumping my arms i'm pumping and at some point people walking are passing me i'm just like just start walking devon like just 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 give it up you you did what you came here to do well done right you're, you're almost there at this point go ahead and walk king so 
I don't stop walking until I pass the nine mile mark because I ran the marathon relay with the queen a couple of years ago. And that was about nine miles. So I knew I can run nine miles without stopping. So it's not as soon as I passed it, but when I passed the nine miles in my head, I was like, okay, make it to 10. And then my leg said, you're not making it to 10. <laughs> you're going to stop right now. So I stopped. And at that moment, my heart began this the race out of my chest. Everything's real bright and the breathing became real shallow. And I was like, uh-oh, I need some food. <laughs> I need calories. I need some type of fuel, some type of energy. And, you know, I asked God for some food. And then maybe like a half mile later, there was a, a nice group of folks that were giving out bananas. I was like, can I, can I please have a banana? They're like, yes, of course. Here you go. I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, that gave me some energy. And another half mile down, there's some folks giving out some fruit snacks. I was like, uh, Sinclair probably wouldn't want me eating fruit snacks. So I, I said no snacks. to the first person. And then the second fruit snack person was right there. So I was like, mm, Sinclair, sorry. <laughs> I took it. <laughs> and then I had energy again. So I started doing a little bit of jogging, walking, jogging, walking. But my point is on your marathon, right, in real life and in your business life, there needs to be checkpoints where you continue to put fuel into your body to help you keep going, right? You're not just going to, to run a, a half marathon or a marathon on an empty stomach. You need to fuel before, during, and best believe after mm -hmm. for sure to get your body back to full health. Uh, so Sinclair in business, what does the fuel look like? What does recharging yourself as an entrepreneur, what does, getting electrolytes and hydrating yourself look like as a business owner? Um, I feel like on a daily basis, that's getting good sleep. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's this grind culture. That's like, I'll sleep when I'm dead and, you know, sleep mm -hmm. is for suckers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to David. Shout out. Um, but yeah, I think that's not a sustainable model for entrepreneurs because again, your, uh, health and wellness usually directly affects the health of your business and how much money you're bringing in. So you got to be taking care of your body. So on a daily basis, I feel like it's getting sleep, getting good fuel um, and focusing on health and wellness. I think for me and for us in terms of like in, in a year, you know, uh, time frame, we usually take a trip like once every quarter, if, you know, maybe a local trip one quarter. We do, you know, we got to do one big international trip. And then y'all know y'all know Sinclair her international way. trips. Um, but yeah, that's that is how at least I like to refuel because it gets me thinking about things other than the business. It gets me outside of the problems I normally am am uh, thinking about. Outside of sending emails, outside of following up in POs and all of these things, um, and just exploring and being a kid again. Um, and I feel like that is rejuvenating for me. Cause then I come back. Well, one, I have, we have a lot of ideas when we travel, right? We always talk about like, Oh man, what if we did this? What if we did this? Just being exposed to different things, different people, different cultures, different foods around the world, different sites. Um, it, it just, it, it sparks different things in the brain and in the body. Yeah. And so you come back and I feel like after a good trip, I feel renewed. I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to get back. I'm ready to, you know, put some of these things we talked about. We usually are talking about business and talking about goals and talking yes, about we are. what we want to do differently when we come back. So when I come back, I'm ready to put those things into action. Um, so I feel like, yeah, for, for us and for, for me, it looks like travel. It looks like stopping to get a massage. Um, even if it's in the middle of the day, that's, that's the best time. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's really making those intentional times to block off the calendar, say that this is time is dedicated to me and I'm going to do something that makes me feel good. That takes my mind off of whatever is stressing me out. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, let me be honest with you, Sinclair, your answer to that question aligns perfectly with how I thought you were going to answer the next one awkward you know it's okay we have different perspective i think you answered it very authentically to sinclair right when fuel means rest it means vacation it means massages now how i perceive fuel <laughs> let me is, guess books this is so podcast. our personality <laughs> this is so our personality how i was perceiving fuel and entrepreneurship is 
what are you consuming or doing that helps you to get to the finish line? Yeah, right. So if sense. your if your goal is I want to have a million dollar business, even as you are starting that business, you should be consuming books, mm -hmm. going to master classes, going to conferences, listening training. to podcasts, training. There's be things that you're doing that's fueling your body. So as you're using the muscles or the information that you already know, uh, to me, that was the same as like running and me using the calories that's in my body. You have to give yourself new information. So that you can continue on the race or so you can continue building. So I think, you know, there are two sides to the same coin. You need your rest. You need your massages. But at the same time, you need to make sure you're continuing to feed your entrepreneurship brain and experience so that you can build the amazing business you want to do. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you. I guess I misunderstood your question. No, no, no. You didn't misunderstand. You <laughs> answered it from your heart. <laughs> <laughs> it was a truly authentic answer for you. Um, now, I want to take a little bit of a, a pause and a break before we go into our next topic. Um, and then we will go into our Ask the Claire segment. The question for Ask the Claire this week, so Sinclair can have time to, uh, to think of an answer, is what's something that you didn't think you were capable of that you want to try to achieve? Right, because I think for me, a half marathon is something that was like, whew, growing up, wouldn't have thought about doing it. If you asked me a year ago, I would, I can't run 13 miles, but now I've ran 13 miles, right? So having that same mindset in business, whether it's a million dollar business, $10 million business, billion dollar business, I can take that same mindset and now achieve that thing, right? So for you, what's something that you never thought you were capable of achieving that maybe next year you want to go ahead and give, give a shot at, give a try at, all right? Okay. We'll get into that answer right after this quick commercial break. Look, we're going to get right back into the amazing podcast. But if you didn't know, in 2017, we created Black Wall Street, the board game, because we thought more families needed to know about the history of Tulsa Black Wall Street. More families needed to know about the legacy of Black excellence left behind of Tulsa Black Wall Street that we can own of Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Salon. We can have a Booker T. Washington High School. We can have an Uncle Steve Barbecue. We can have a Renaissance man like Simon Barry who had his own taxi service and bus service that got bought out by the city of Tulsa. We have brilliance in our DNA. We wanted to make sure that your family can play a game that teaches them about this brilliance. So we have Black Wall Street, the board game right here. We had the first edition available in 2017 that got sold out we're on the second edition right now or you can get the beautiful masterpiece version of the game as well it's up to you head to playblackwallstreet.com and get yourself black wall street the board game to empower you your family and generations to come playblackwallstreet.com let's get back to the episode we are back into it going over my marathon lessons and how we translate the lessons into business lessons for y'all all right um now next lesson the lesson that i thought sinclair would say take breaks and take vacations to is pay attention to your body and take breaks uh -huh, uh -huh. when you need to it's about finishing not just starting right so my my goal going into it y'all and i said this to sinclair too i was like my goal honestly i just want to finish without stopping uh, and, I, and I had a time goal. My time goal was three hours and 15 minutes. And I wanted to finish without stopping. I said that multiple times to multiple people. And typically when I say something, I try my hardest. And I did try my hardest to achieve what I said I'm going to do. So again, I'm running. And I think the, the biggest momentum kill for me, Sinclair, was when I saw that mile six marker. Mm. Because in my head, this was right after the, the person with the sign that said, oh, after mile eight, don't trust the forest. So I was like, oh, clearly it must be mile eight. Oh, they they, they messed with my <laughs> mental. I was like, it, it was mile four. What, what are you doing with the mile eight right. sign right here, ma'am? Unhelpful. Ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> um, unhelpful. Um, anyway, I saw that sign so in my head. I was thinking, okay, eight miles, five more to go. I can do this. I can do this. I'm running. I'm feeling pretty good, right? Maybe I'll put a little, little bit of pep in my step at that point. And then a little bit later, an official marker comes up and it says, it's only mile six, player. 
I think I said that verbatim on the whole sign. It's only my, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's only mile six player. Um, and immediately I'm like, I get drastically more tired. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not even halfway yet. Oh my goodness. How am I going to do this? So eventually, you know, I, I keep going and I finish all the way up to mile nine, like I said, but by then my legs are burning. They're hurting. Even my arms are starting to cramp up, but I'm starting to run with my arms down. <laughs> doing the floppy disk it was just like it was it was rough so and then i started saying like, okay devon like you can do whatever this is this is right now it's not quite running it's not quite walking either but you can do whatever this is right now or you can stop walk fast and jog when you get your your speed up again you get your uh your heart up again so i did that right i stopped a little bit after mile nine and i did some some speed walking still fast enough to be passing a few folks <laughs> yeah sucker sucker but <laughs> not fast enough to also be passed by more more people as well um but the key part here again especially since my calories were low blood sugar was low i was already like seeing real bright heart really racing i think if i would have tried to run i would have pushed myself all the way to a limit that would have had me finish the race at all speaking of which there was a person you know i'm praying for that person to have no idea how it ended up but it was about mile 11 on the ground paramedics was there they were not breathing they were not moving and they were getting a cpr and heart compressions scary very scary right and how i i connect that to to entrepreneurship is there's a lot of people that start entrepreneurship but as y'all know over 50 percent of businesses fail and stop after the first three years Right. So how many folks are going to start the race of a half marathon or start the experience of entrepreneurship, but never end, whether it's because they started with a shortcut and they didn't build the muscle, didn't learn the lessons, whether it's because they weren't consuming the podcast, they weren't reading the book. So they ran out of fuel or they just didn't take those intentional pauses and breaks before they kept going, no matter what. They, they couldn't finish. Right. right? Um, so what is what's your your take on that one? Um take vacations, get massages. I mean, it applies. Yeah. (laughs) But also I feel like we've talked about in other episodes, how it's really hard to do that. If your business relies solely on you, Mm. because if you take a break, then your business takes a break. And one, one day a break on your business can make or break you, right. Depending on what type of business you have. Um, and so I think it's also important once you get to, I mean, you, you may need to start off. Most businesses start off with just you, but at some point you do need to get to the point where you are taking the time to train somebody else, bring somebody on, delegate, whatever that looks like so that you're setting yourself up to be able to take a break, to step back from the business when you need to, and it can still run. Mm. So, you know, whatever that looks like, again, it's going to look very different depending on what type of business you have, but try your best to make sure that you're setting aside the extra training effort, right? The time to create the SOPs, the time to go SOP standard operating procedure, what Mm. you're going to give to somebody else that shows them how to do your job, how to do this task so that they can do it with the same level of quality or at least a comparable level of quality as you. Um, And so I think if you have those types of systems put in place, then you can take a day off then you can take a vacation then you can do these things and not have to worry about your business going completely under while you're gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a a series of thoughts right, right after that, Sinclair, which is a great point. Uh, one is sometimes this is especially me, right? I didn't want to give a task to somebody else because I didn't think that they would do it a hundred percent like Devon would do it. But here's, here's a mathematical equation for you, right? Sales, for example, let's say if I get on a sales call, I I have a 50% close rate. That means if I have 10 schools that I call, have hour long, uh, zoom meetings with, if there's 10 schools, I'm going to close five of those schools because I'm Devon. I have the experience. I have the the personality, the charm, whatever it is. Now, let's say I train someone else to do it and they get on, they have a 30% close rate. Some people might see that as, oh, that's a fail. They're only closing three out of 10 schools. But the win is now I can be sleep. Now I can be on vacation. 
Now I can be at home with my kids. And instead of me getting zero closes with my efforts, someone else is able to get three, three sales, three closes with my zero effort. Yeah. Right. And that's the power of being able to train and give it to someone else where they might not do it exactly the way that you do it. Sometimes they'll do it better, but you know, a lot of times at first they might not get the same numbers, but they got those numbers with you having to do zero work. Yep. Right. So there's a, a great book called the E-Myth. I don't remember who, who's it's about, who it, who's the author E-Myth. There we go. Sinclair's go look it up, but E-Myth. And then there's also E-Myth revised, same, same book, just a revised version of it. Uh, Michael E. Gerber. Boom. Michael E. Gerber. Really great book that goes through the myth of entrepreneurship that basically says you can't do it yourself. Right. And a lot of entrepreneurs think that I'm going to build this big business. It's going to be all me. I'm going to be the sales. I'm going to be the marketing. And then you think that this entrepreneurship is going to give you so much freedom. But in reality, after you've built this big business and you're doing 10, 15 different jobs, you now have less time than you did when you were just working that nine to five. Right. So in order to really free yourself in your business, you need to transition from being an entrepreneur and being a business owner. Hiring staff, having payroll, having HR, doing training, having retreats and having people in place that run your business for you instead of you doing 18 different jobs, having a whole bunch of gray hair and now you're stressed out and you can't finish the marathon. That's that's real life. Yep. Real, real life. We got a great team. We appreciate y'all. We got a great dope team, had both uh, team meetings this week, and I think our team allows us to be able to do other things, other tasks, run marathons, take month long vacations because we have an amazing group of folks that we have trained. We've wrote S SOPs for we've uh, let's, we've done onboarding for yep. uh, shout out to the team. We appreciate y'all. Okay. Um, Queen. Yes. Have you had enough time to think about my ask the Claire question? Yes. You have. Great. So before you answer, I want to do a quick recap of these steps or these lessons, right? So lesson number one was training and conditioning. What are you doing before the race? What are you doing before you start the business that prepares you to start your business? Lesson number two was stay in your comfort zone and run your own race, right? Don't get distracted by the other people on social media, friends, family, run your race. Take take wisdom when you can, but try not to be like passively influenced by people's behavior. Um, number three, don't take shortcuts, right? There's there's a difference between leveraging maybe another people's audience or a skill or a platform. You can definitely leverage, but don't think that there's going to be a shortcut, an easy way to do something because there's not. Learn, learn from our L. There's, <laughs> there's not. Uh, lesson number four is keep fueling your body. Stay hydrated or fueling your entrepreneurial mind, body, and soul. Keep growing. Keep hustling all throughout this process. Lesson number five, last lesson, is pay attention to your body and take those intentional breaks when you need to. All right. Now, ask the Claire question. What is something? You believe, Sinclair, currently right now, you are not capable of that you would like to achieve in 2024. Oh, I misunderstood the question. This is awkward. What was your interpretation? But you meant that I previously thought that I. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We, we ain't worried about the past. Come on, right, right now. Well, then you have to go first. I need to, I'm back to the drawing board. Okay, right now. So it is difficult for me to answer because I think on some level I can do anything. I was I was about to finish your sentence for you. Yeah, you gotta say that too. Yes. I, I I really believe like on some level anything is possible, but something that like maybe there's just a little bit of, I'll say like maybe imposter syndrome around. Uh, I would say is I want to create a master plan community and city. And I think that's a very big lofty goal that I don't know anyone directly that's done it. I know like historical people who've done it. I can read books about people who've made uh, master plans in cities, but I don't know anyone. I can't touch anyone who's built what I want to build. So yeah, I would say there's that. Now I'm not gonna be able to do that next year per se, 
But I think there's some small steps that I can make towards that big lofty goal. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that's maybe a little bit more tangible uh, would be maybe my graphic novel that I want to write is another thing that I think I have a little bit of imposter syndrome around, even though I read it out loud to the queen the other day. And let me tell you, y'all, it's, oh, yeah. it's sounding good. Um, but I want to write a Harry Potter Marvel Universe uh, Hobbit uh, Lord of the Rings level of a graphic novel that's able to really have a global cultural effect. And I've been working on that story for probably like three years conceptually, two years writing. And there's a little bit of a, uh, is, is it going to be, is it going to live up to the dream? Is Are people going to like it? Is it going to have the impact that I want? Um, but I mean, in 2024, the first book is going to be released. So that's going to be a, it's going to be a exciting slash find scary out. thing. Yeah, we definitely gonna find out. We definitely need a marketing plan behind it. Hello. Help me oh. out. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my two building the city and releasing that graphic novel book. Okay. So, I mean, those are things you think you can do though. Right. I've already said, I don't, I mean, maybe running an actual marathon could be something, mm -hmm. but I mean, if I can run 13, I can run 26. There's not too many things. I have a, I have a 100% growth. Anything is possible mindset. So like, there's very few things I'm just like, Oh, I'm incapable. What? I'm Devon. Like, <laughs> like I can, I can do anything that I set my mind to. And that's how I feel. That's how I hope my, my kids are going to feel. That's how I hope I can help you feel someday. Like any, you can do anything. So Sinclair <laughs> spotlight. Right. Yeah. Right. That's exactly how that felt. Um, so the thing that I think it equivalates to what you said of like something I maybe have some imposter syndrome on of, but, but it's at the same time, I'm like, I can do this because there's been so many people who have done it mm. um, is to have a natural childbirth. Oh yeah. Yes. Disclaimer, this is not an announcement. I feel not like I need all. to do this every time, especially, especially now because the pressure is on. This is not an announcement. Um, but I, yeah, that is something that's like, I know I can do it. I know my body's built to do it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, especially like, you know, I've been asking like a lot of my friends, like, oh, so what's been your experience? And just like hearing everybody's stories, I think has been somewhat empowering. But at the same time, it's like, <laughs> can i do this because there's a lot of people don't. don't yeah or that a lot of people go in thinking that they're going to and then yeah it doesn't work out whether whether for their uh like whether they chose to or not like sometimes things happen and you you can't it's out of your control you need to you know have an intervention or something like that right but other times it's like no uh, you know you you go in wanting to have a natural childbirth and then just the pain is too much it's too much and they decide to to not you know have some type of intervention. I also want to give the disclaimer: there's no judgment for me at all for whatever people choose. But my preference or my uh, goal is to be able to do it naturally. Mm. Um, and so yeah, that's that's the thing that like I'm I'm doing all the work now, like you know, to be able to make that happen. Um, but yeah, that's the thing where it's like, oh, okay, I know my body can do it. Yeah. But to your same point, like. Again, maybe I do know somebody and I just don't know their birth story. But as of now, I don't have anybody that I can touch. You know that, that one person that you can for sure call or DM. Yeah. Or I can call their husband. The I, mean, husband. I can call their husband. I can send know. a DM. But yeah, yeah, again, yes, I have somebody that's like one degree away that I just need a message. But nobody like close to me mm. that I like would have. That would be an easy conversation to have. So um yeah, I think that it is a little bit nerve wracking that I'm, you know, I'm just using Dr. Google as my as my guide here mm. um, and trying to find other people, um, you know, other communities of folks and, and, and just get in the right mindset. But it is a little bit daunting, again, not knowing a whole lot of people who have done that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, that is a that is a good one. However, Sinclair, I feel like there was another one that was in your head. I feel like there was another thing that was rattling off that you chose not to say instead no that's First that's that's that the one are you talking about business related it can be business related it doesn't have to be business what are you related. thinking of just i'm not thinking of anything i just i just don't know if that's the only thing that came to your consciousness oh i mean i do want to start a health coaching certification program mm -hmm. but i think i can do that i don't oh, think okay. i can't do that okay. that's why i'm just like 
I don't that that's not what that wasn't the answer to this question. Uh, you you believe that giving natural birth is going to be harder than starting the health coaching business? Hundred percent. I'm not saying it is or is not. <laughs> she she looked at me like, "What you trying to say, <laughs> man? <laughs> you have no idea." I don't. I know. I was just making sure I asked the tough questions. Yes, one hundred percent. I think on a physical, mental spiritual all of level them. all of them all the levels it will be the hardest thing i will ever do mm. you're gonna do it five times <sighs> probably four four times three if i'm lucky <laughs> <laughs> three if we are real real uh i feel like people are like the math ain't math right, Hold right, on. five right. kids three <laughs> births what is five kids what is going on three births that's the goal here you heard you heard it here right. first that's, that's what we do it <laughs> um so i got I, I challenge you all folks that are watching folks that are listening what was something that maybe previous you thought was impossible? You thought that you wouldn't be capable of that you want to rethink and reimagine. You want to make a reality in the next year, two years, three years, 50 years, however long it takes. Right. Rethink what you think is impossible and what you think is possible. Right. Um, cool. Appreciate it. Sinclair. Thank you for uh, entertaining me and allowing me for to do this podcast on my amazing marathon experience. Um, I will be running a marathon again in case or half marathon. <laughs> Claire Hunter, I will be running a half marathon again. Daniel and the rest of my positive peer pressure folks are going to do it once a year. Sinclair has been adamant. She's not running any type of thing that says marathon in it. I half quarter, anything. But I she will run. Go ahead. A 10K. Correct. I'm not against against it. It's just not something I see myself doing. It's not something I need to check off my list. It's not a bucket list item. Why I, not? I just don't. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like like 10K is enough for me. Like I don't I don't like running enough to want to do that. Like I just mm. feel like I would be like I would be regretting it halfway through. So what is pulling you to a 10K? Way, because that's the... attainable i also i mean to be very honest like as the health nerd i'm not a hundred percent on board uh -huh. with the marathon thing they're very hard on the body mm -hmm. um i just running for that long is not really good for you in my opinion mm -hmm. so i also just don't want to be pushed i already know like my tendency to like burn out and like i feel like my kind of pattern is like going hard burn out and then have to like recharge and like build myself back up and i just feel like that would just exacerbate that more for me mm -hmm. especially yeah, going into these this next years of our lives where we were are going to be starting the family i'm like that's what i want all my focus for my body to be doing that's a lot mm -hmm. for the body um and i just feel like my body would not respond well to that much running Still, you know, I'm not gonna press it too much because I do want my five kids, so I'm go. not gonna press the whole marathon thing. But uh, once a year, I'll be out there running my marathon, and then maybe once a year, me and Sinclair will run a 10k. 10k, I can do a 10k once a year, oh. I'll, I'll oh. come to that. Let's do it, let's do it. Um, Sinclair, let's give some folks some updates for the week. You can do business related updates, you can do personal related updates. What updates do you have that you want the people to hear from? you directly mm -hmm. think about it i don't have any personal updates so all right we're business gonna, it is all right we're gonna go with the standard uh we have our 10-week financial literacy program leaders innovating tomorrow aka lit yeah who you with lit shout out um and so this is a financial literacy program where we're taking high school, middle school, and newly the babies, the babies elementary school students, uh, and basically asking them what is a problem that they see in their community, in their household, in their schools, and then walking them through how to solve that problem with the business idea. And their deliverable is a business pitch at the end of this. And we also have a business pitch competition yeah. where they compete against other students doing the same thing. And we see who's got the best business idea. Um, so it's really exciting. It's a great program. And if it sounds like something you want to see at your school, hit us up at info at playblackwallstreet.com so that we can talk about how we can support your scholars with the lit program. Let's do it. Um, updates I have. So maybe like last week, I dove into a very deep AI hole. 
And I didn't come out until it was 4 a.m. And then I finally went to sleep for a little bit. Um, but I encourage everybody to to do a little bit of research into the many different AI platforms. Um, this is not endorsement on any, but some of the ones that we're going to be most likely using, of course, chat GPT, which can help you, right? Sinclair was talking about, you know, how do you take some time off as an entrepreneur or hire other people? You might not be in a position to hire more people, but you can buy some technology, right? So if you can pay $20 a month or some of these technologies are free to help get stuff done faster, now you have more time to maybe do some other stuff. So chat GPT is great for helping you do some research, maybe doing some creative writing, writing emails, blogs, uh, Instagram captions, all that good stuff. It can also do like transcriptions of YouTube videos if you pay for it. That definitely saves me a lot of time. So instead of watching a YouTube video, I'll get it transcribed or I'll get it summarized and I'll be able to learn it from there. Um, so chat GPT Descript, which is a video platform that we're not using yet, but we might start using that. will help you create some short form content, transcribe your videos, summarize your videos, create show notes for your podcast, all that good stuff, all through an AI platform. Um, and then another one that we're using is called Simplified AI. It's basically a social media scheduler, similar to, to Buffer, similar to Later, Facebook, Business Suite, all that good stuff. These are ways that you can create content, schedule it, and then again, you can sit back, relax, sleep, go on vacation, get a massage, be on date night, but you know content is still going out like clockwork, all right? So that's kind of the uh, rabbit hole that I've been in the past week, two weeks, Three weeks is trying to figure out how can we leverage technology as an entrepreneurial couple to do some stuff for us because we are entering into the I want kids phase. So I need to make sure that as we have these beautiful, amazing, melanated babies running around, the company can continue to be as productive as it was before kids. Right? We got some good momentum right now. We got a great team. We're growing at a good pace. And I want to make sure that that continues as our family grows. Um, so, yeah, you'll you'll see some more AI content coming out very soon. You, you might be watching AI content right now. You don't know. It might be robots. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> um, but, yeah, definitely make sure y'all y'all tap into AI, learn a little bit and try to use it in your business as you feel comfortable. Um, Queen, anything else you want to bless the folks with before we get on out of here? No, I think we should wrap it on up. Let us wrap it on up. I said lettuce because we're having lettuce. Lettuce wraps. Let us wrap us. Let us wrap it all up. Let us wrap. Let us wrap us. Let us wrap. Let us wrap it all up. Let us wrap it all up. Let us wrap it all up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we appreciate y'all for tapping into the M4 show, Melanated Mary Millionaires in the Making. I'm your host, Creed, aka Devon Travel, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. Hey, listen, I've been getting compliments left and right. I had lunch with one of my uh, old supervisors, and he was like, Devon, what are you eating? I was like, hey, don't worry about it. Secret menu. But I got my beautiful co host here. I'm Sinclair, aka the D, health nerd. Make sure y'all secure the marriage. Make sure y'all secure the love. And of course, make sure y'all secure the bag. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the M4 show and our mission to increase the wealth of black families. If you received any value from this episode, any value at all, any, 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 do us a favor and give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple, Spotify, all anything them. all of them all, them. all of them wherever you're listening <laughs> go ahead and like and subscribe and after you like and subscribe make sure you send this episode to at least one family that you really want to see win we'll catch y'all next time peace